Adventure. Okay, let's start. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us uh, this evening, uh, pending where you are around the globe. In Israel, it's an evening time now, noon time, Florida. Uh, for those who are joining us for the first time, my name is Ilan and uh, I'm uh, the owner of Wild Dive. Wild Dive is a diving uh, uh, tour operator doing diving trips all over the world. And as you probably guess, uh, during this period, we are not really able to go and dive around the world. So what we are trying to do is at least to, to bring the, the ocean and the nature and the, everything which is diving related to uh, your salon. And uh, at least so we can all enjoy the, the sea as much as possible during this time. And this is why we are doing this uh, series of uh, lectures about the diving destinations and uh, some more subjects. And uh, today we have a very unique presentation done by Mr. Pascal Lecoq, uh, who is known all over the world as the painter of blue. And me personally, I'm very excited uh, to hear Pascal today. And uh, I want to personally uh, thank Pascal for uh, being with us today and uh, for sharing his uh, story with us. So thank you, Pascal, for that. Before Pascal will start his, uh, his uh, amazing presentation, some technical data, uh, especially for those who are not used to use the Zoom uh, webinar. Uh, so what we're doing today is a webinar and not a meeting. This means that we, are, uh, we cannot see you and we cannot hear you. So for you, the best way to communicate with us and uh, mainly with me because Pascal will be uh, concentrated in his uh, presentation is to uh, communicate through the chat button. If you have any comment, anything you want to share with us, please use the chat button. And uh, when you're doing that, please do not forget to, uh, to mention that it's for all panelists and attendees, so everybody will be able to see that. If you want it to be only for my eyes, you can leave it as all panelists only. Uh, so please do not forget that. And at the end of the presentation, we're going to have time for questions. So if you have any questions, please do not put it on the chat uh, section, but use the Q&A, which is questions and answers. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to collect the questions from there. And uh, I will try to ask Pascal uh, most, or maybe we'll be able to answer all of the questions uh, uh, you're going to ask. And uh, that's it for now. So I want to give the stage for Pascal. Everybody, please have a great evening. Pascal, have a great adventure. And uh, thank you, Pascal. The stage is yours. Bok Kersov, Ilan, and everybody, Manishma. Uh, it's uh, my only word in Hebrew, so don't worry. Uh, I'm uh, even using my uh, French language, so I'm sorry. Uh, you will hear me uh, speaking uh, with my broken English, but uh, I hope you will understand me. Uh, but as uh, everybody says, uh, one picture is worth a thousand words. So you're going to see many, many pictures tonight on this presentation. Uh, so thank you, uh, Ian, and uh, why not to uh, have me and uh, to share my work, uh, not only in a lot, but uh, worldwide, uh, if uh, I understand uh, well uh, the attendees. Uh, I'm not uh, unknown in, uh, in your country. Uh, uh, just uh, one minute, second, please. Something is wrong with my. Take your time, Pascal. Take your time. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I missed the button. Um, um, I have been very uh, supported by uh, uh, your, the diving industry in Israel, uh, making uh, many uh, uh, 
cover in the dark magazine uh, since uh, 1995, I think, uh, in Yam magazine or CIA, I think. And also, uh, I had the opportunity to, to, to have a project of an exhibition in the Jaffa Museum a few years ago, that was in 2013. Uh, about a jubilee, about a flight between France and uh, Israel, if I remember well. And um, the conservator asked me to share two of my paintings, but the exhibition was cancelled. A few, few years ago, I have been honored to be um, a, a juror for um, a contest for kids about, about sharks. And I did it in 2016. But maybe you know, um, most of you know my uh, icon painting, my signature painting, which is uh, <coughs> the, the Matador. It was published in a lot of uh, color and in uh, many press, uh, and uh, we had a lot of uh, merchandising made uh, about this picture. I'm already uh, drinking my coffee in this mug. <coughs> um, and um, uh, I got very popular with this picture. You, you see someone uh, in a shock uh, festival took uh, the picture to, to repaint it on, on the street. Uh, someone steals the picture here on the right here uh, to put it on a mural. Uh, I did some murals sometime uh, and uh, in uh, very nice here uh, support, uh, not the canvas. Uh, and uh, I was surprised one day that someone came to me and uh, said, I want to show you something, and that was his back, where he put his metaphor um, tattoo. Uh, someone else uh, did it also, yeah, you, you can see it. And I had uh, also two of the painting who have been uh, translated in tattoo. Uh, I have not the picture of this one, but uh, I know uh, that was made on the back of a lady's uh, uh, back. Uh, this, uh, this picture, who I made in uh, 93, uh, became very, very quickly uh, an icon, uh, my signature, and uh, I played with it, putting it in different uh, of the painting. Like the ballroom here, and uh, now I'm going to to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, then to see uh, all I uh, what I did uh, in my uh, uh, art life. So I was born uh, in uh, 1958 uh, in Fontainebleau, France. Uh, Fontainebleau is a little historical city. Uh, close to Paris. I grew up uh, there and then uh, I went uh, to school. Um, when I was uh, a kid, um, I was mainly interested in uh, mathematics and physics. And by the way, so, so, so that can surprise you, of course, and because uh, usually artists are not uh, uh, Cartesian. Uh, but by the way, uh, uh, the knowledge I got, I got from, uh, from that time <coughs> uh, was very important for me in, in the way I was uh, doing uh, <coughs> my painting, the composition, the proportion. I have on the, on the top of my uh, uh, workshop, just uh, the next door here, yeah, I have some quotes on the wall, and one uh, of them is from uh, my uh, father in uh, painting, Salvador Dali, who was saying that uh, if, you if, <clears throat> if you refuse to study anatomy, the art of drawing and perspective, the mathematics of aesthetic, and the science of color, let me tell you that is more a sign of laziness than of genius. And I use this quote uh, many times, not only in painting, but in uh, other uh, areas. When I was uh, at school at this time, uh, in the 1970s, we had no computer, we had no Game Boy, so we had to be, um, uh, 
to, to, to be kept busy by our parents. So they send uh, us, me and my sister, to uh, music school after, after the school, evening school, where I uh, learned uh, violin. Uh, I started violin uh, I was three years and a half. And um, that, was, uh, that was not so easy. And uh, when the sound of a violin is bad, uh, it's very bad. So when I was uh, 18 years old, uh, no, uh, 12 years old, I gave up. So my parents were looking for a place uh, to keep me busy. And as I was uh, always uh, drawing at home, they sent me uh, to an art school. And I was very lucky to have a great uh, classic teacher where I learned uh, uh, the academic way uh, to make uh, art, like uh, in the 19th century way in uh, studios. So right uh, at that time, I discovered also the artwork of uh, Salvador Dali. Uh, we were going to museum and um, uh, I was helping also in the, in the, the city, uh, the exhibitors and the other, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. Uh, I was uh, helping all the artists to hang their uh, uh, exhibition. I'm very sorry for that, but you know, uh, here we are advertising every, every time. Okay, uh, so uh, I was uh, no more uh, looking uh, for uh, what I will do. I knew already that uh, uh, I will be a painter. Uh, by the way, uh, not this kind of painter, but more uh, uh, fine art painter. Uh, if you notice, by the way, in the previous one and uh, this one, if you always ask yourself uh, where the spotted came to the spotted race, or you know, or you know. When I was able to, to drive at um, 18 years old, I think that was at that time, I used uh, my mother's car, which uh, was not this one, but it was the same color. So that was a blue one. That was the blue de chevaux, by the way. And the first thing I did is to uh, go to uh, the ocean. That was 200 kilometers from uh, my city on the west coast in Normandy. And uh, you, you know that maybe you know that in Normandy there is a lot of cows and uh, a lot of horses. It, I developed at this time uh, a very um, uh, from, for my art, uh, I wanted to paint a lot of horses because that was a, a great subject. Because of my uh, background as a, as a student, where I uh, studied uh, anatomy, and uh, when uh, we were looking for uh, you know, very good subjects with the muscle moving, etc., uh, nothing was better than a follow player, for example with those very small uh, ponies. So I made uh, a lot of painting uh, with horses. And uh, you, can, uh, you can note that uh, there is not a lot of green in my painting. It's already very blue since uh, the beginning. When I was in Normandy, where I moved uh, when I was 20, uh, I was not only painting uh, uh, horses, but uh, I was also doing other subjects like uh, Greek temples, um, uh, Venetian landscape or Venetian subject, uh, or more um, symbolic or surrealistic uh, subject. I work a little bit on uh, watercolors and paper, always uh, doing <coughs> a lot of uh, painting about Greece, where I was used to go in vacation. And uh, other subjects uh, already in uh, the kind of set design, uh, where I'm going to, to talk uh, 
in a few minutes. I was already working with some galleries, exhibition, and uh, I didn't feel good with all those uh, unprofessional people or um, not very good uh, merchants. So I decided to open my own gallery in, uh, in Honfleur, a little historical city in Normandy. Uh, and you see that my uh, corridor was uh, there in a good place. Uh, I was uh, still making a lot of uh, round trip to Paris, main city, uh, where I uh, continued my studies and I claimed uh, several degrees in art to get a PhD in art in uh, 1985. Uh, the subject of my uh, dissertation was about uh, a physical connection between all the art, music, uh, dance, uh, uh, sculpture, lightning, uh, uh, singing, uh, drawing. I put them together and I study most of the implication in a set design in uh, opera. And I was able for the next 10 years to make uh, many uh, stage design in different uh, opera houses in uh, Europe. I was doing also uh, costume design. Uh, that was my, my mainly uh, between uh, 1986 to 19, uh, 1996. After that, I was more concentrated in uh, my artwork in uh, painting. A few years ago, they asked me again to do uh, some uh, design in uh, 2016 in uh, Opera de Nice, uh, in the Riviera in France. I worked uh, uh, about uh, the magic flute by, uh, by Mozart. Uh, by the way, this connection with uh, the opera is very, it's funny because uh, that introduced me to the uh, diving world. I was uh, one day in, 19, in 85, 85 uh, in a playhouse in, in France, working on The Flying Dutchman, an opera by Richard Wagner. It's about a ghost uh, uh, boat. And uh, I was sitting in the playhouse, uh, looking at the set design with the set des uh, light designer. And during that afternoon, uh, the musician came to make uh, the rehearsal and, you know, they are going under the pit. And as I put a curtain on uh, the floor of the stage to figure the, the sea, seeing those musicians coming uh, down under the pit uh, gave me the idea of a painting of divers uh, with uh, uh, big instruments. And uh, why I made this uh, uh, big uh, helicon uh, or suba, it's because in French, uh, the word snorkel is the same as tuba. And tuba is also the name of this big instrument. So that was a play on word. And um, I, did, I did this painting as a surrealist uh, painting, just an idea uh, that came in like that. I will explain you later how I'm processing. But that was that, you know, just a second, I saw the, the scene and I made uh, this uh, funny, uh, funny picture. I had no idea about uh, diving. So the divers uh, I took for models were uh, uh, remember, uh, remembers from movies, uh, James Bond movie mostly. Uh, where they were on, always in a dark suit with this uh, round um, uh, mask. I made this one and I made a second one, a third one, and I was exhibiting them uh, in my gallery in Honfleur. And one day someone uh, came in and said, oh, I have a travel agency and that would be nice to have your picture. I had two or three uh, with divers on my booth at the Salon Nautique, the boat show in Paris. And I said, okay, why, why not? Uh, no, you need to, to share and to have uh, the more uh, people looking at it. So I went to this exhibition and I was discovering uh, the underwater world. Uh, 
I met very quickly, but very far, because that was a famous person, uh, Jacques Cousteau, coming to the show. And uh, at, this, at this show in Paris, I think that was in 92, uh, someone came to me and said, oh, but uh, you, you should go to the uh, International Picture uh, Festival in Antibes, where at this time was a concentration of all people involved in uh, movies and uh, picture and uh, diving, by the way. So I went to, to this uh, show in uh, 93, and uh, uh, I discovered I discover this world. I had no idea uh, there was a videast, uh, musician, uh, many materials, um, camera makers. That was a big, huge, huge, huge um, industry. And uh, that was for me a, a big, uh, big hit. You know, I knew, I knew at that time that uh, that was my niche, that I will find uh, my, uh, my, my, mostly my customers. And uh, I started this way. That was uh, back in the 1990s, and we are now in 2020. So this was a great adventure. I went uh, then uh, from from Antibes mostly to different countries to show my uh, artwork. Uh, went there and uh, come back, and uh, I was uh, dreaming, always dreaming to catch uh, customers and uh, galleries and new um, uh, new. Uh, people like in my, my work, but you know, it's always in your head. Uh, now, of course, uh, for an artist, there is no time to rest. So let me tell you a little bit about new uh, water and time while I'm doing uh, this kind of picture. Yes? Just a moment, there is a big sound. And if you can speak closer to the microphone so we can hear you better. Oh, there are some, some, someone is mowing, uh, someone is doing uh, his lawn uh, on the, <laughs> my neighbor. I can't tell him to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to stop, I'm sorry. No problem, just talk closer. Okay, to I, the I'm, yeah. is it better now, yeah? Is it better if I speak here? Yes, yes, much better. Okay, go on. Oh, oh, okay, so I, I told you, I was born in uh, Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau, if you know it, this place, uh, it's a city in the middle of a big forest. So that means a huge wall, a green wall, and uh, it's like a jail. So maybe, maybe in my mind, uh, during my 20 years living there, I was uh, looking for, uh, to escape this, this place to escape, and the only way to escape it is to go uh, up in the air and uh, in the sky. It's an expl explanation, but I'm not sure it's an explanation. And very, very quickly, I was attracted with water, as always, and uh, I mixed, uh, you know, uh, underwater scene and um, sky and uh, Sky, sky scene, uh, mixing always the, both things together, and uh, uh, this, this talking with divers, uh, they said mostly sometimes that uh, they, they are thinking, they are flying in underwater. So I think the, the feeling was there, and it's maybe why people liked my uh, uh, pictures because that reminds them how they were feeling underwater in, of course, surrealistic picture uh, uh, and scenery. So I mixed um, the space, for example, with this uh, par par parody. Uh, by the way, this is a copy, uh, it's, it's a print, my print, and I was uh, lucky to have it signed by uh, ten of um, the astronaut who made the NASA history, like uh, Buzz Aldrin, uh, John Glenn, uh, Scott Carpenter. It took for me 15 years to get uh, all those guys uh, signing this picture. And uh, all of them had a copy of, uh, of uh, this, <laughs> this one. 
So you see space and the deep, deep, uh, deep water uh, was always my uh, uh, my way to, to to manage the scene on my paintings. Uh, mostly, you have you never seen a, a horizontal line or something breaking uh, the background between the sky and uh, the deep sea. It's, it's the way I was I was working. <clears throat> I also, uh, I like also the paradox to play with water underwater, uh, like uh, taking a shower underwater. Uh, all this connection with water uh, is also uh, related to the sky because uh, the clouds are uh, water too. And uh, when it's pouring, like uh, right now in, uh, in my place in Florida, uh, it's it's water too, even uh, when uh, it's frozen. So this connection I can't I can't explain why I, I have this connection with uh, with water, and uh, of course uh, the place to mix the sky and uh, the water uh, was in the city of Venice. This is the city of my art. Uh, I know this town uh, by art. Uh, I'm not going uh, anymore there because there is too many people and there was crazy boat <coughs> coming inside the, the canals. But that was really an inspiration for me, uh, historically and uh, artistically, of course. So the question is uh, to dive or not to dive? And the question is simple. I'm not a diver. Most of you know that. But some of them uh, doesn't know. I'm not a diver, I never know. No. Uh, when I was a kid, I had um, mini trouble with my uh, ears, a lot of uh, otitis, I think, that's the word, and infection. So I was uh, far from water. Uh, by the way, living in Fontainebleau, uh, it's not very close to water. And uh, uh, when I started to exhibit in uh, the diving world, everybody said, but you are a diver and you come uh, to visit us, you're going to dive with us. And uh, no, I was not able to do that. So they said, but you can fix it, we can uh, uh, manage it. So um, I was not very crazy to go to surgery because uh, previously I had many trouble with my knees and I, I was done for a while to go uh, to spend my time in the uh, hospital. And by the way, I, will, I, will, I have to say that if I was a diver, I, sh I would have not the, the, the will to paint diving scene because I think that was my way to dive, is to, to do it on my uh, paintings, no? But, okay, uh, of course, many, many people gave me, gave me um, a dive suit, for example, here, that was in Ukraine, and uh, I tried the uh, hard hat, but uh, out of the water. Only uh, this year, in January, I wanted to try this uh, crazy uh, mask, the Kirby Morgan, uh, which was a dry, dry, dry way, so I had no trouble to get uh, water in my ears. Uh, so I made this year my first dive. No, that was not uh, uh, very deep, of course. So I was crawling at the bottom of this um, uh, swimming pool at the Salon de Paris, the Paris Dive Show. But that was, a, that was a great experience. And I got a certificate from the Navy, French Navy, saying that uh, I, uh, I passed my degree uh, on that. So we have to find a, a way to think why I was doing this. And uh, so think, think, uh, think hard, uh, and uh, maybe we can come with the idea that uh, I was a shark in a previous life, maybe. By the way, I'm very attracted with sharks, and I'm very concerned with them, so I'm trying to help as I can, 
uh, on the environmental uh, organization and converse, uh, conservationist. And uh, I worked with uh, the University of Miami to make some shark tagging and making uh, azure uh, biopsy. Uh, I met all the great people uh, uh, involved in the, the shark uh, industry, uh, like uh, Ron and Valerie Taylor, oh yeah. uh, the lady shark, very sweet lady, or uh, Sylvia Earl, and this crazy guy, uh, Andre Hartman uh, from uh, South Africa. Let me give you and making a little break if you want, uh, and I'm going to show you a little video.
So um, you see that I'm uh, very fond of uh, Chart and uh, Ilan, uh, uh, are we uh, running out of time or it's okay to continue? Uh, Perfect, Pascal. Perfect. It's okay. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm going to go a little bit fast about uh, how I'm uh, working technically. Uh, maybe you you'd like to to understand how I'm, uh, I'm working. Um, I'm going to the right slide right now. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm mostly uh, a painter from the studio, so I'm not going outside as an impressionist to go on the spot and uh, to put my easel somewhere to paint something. No, it's not the way I'm working. Uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, little sketch when I have an uh, ID, and for example, I have just a paper just uh, next to me where I made a little, uh, you know, a little sketch here. It's it's done. That was uh, maybe one second to do it. So that's an ID, and uh, I have ten thousand of them. Unfortunately, I'm making only twenty paintings a year, so it's going to take a lot of time for me to achieve all the IDs that I wanted to to show on a painting. So I'm making a lot of little sketch like this. And then I'm looking for documentation because I like to make things very precise, um, almost photographic, uh, when, uh, mostly when it's a uh, subject of uh, architecture or costume, of course, also uh, animals. So I'm doing a lot of um, uh, sketch first, drawing, and then I'm uh, painting the background of uh, uh, the scene on the canvas. After that, I report the drawing I did on paper in different ways. Uh, you know, when it's uh, an architecture like here, I'm using uh, rollers, uh, some tools. And uh, then that's a process. It's a long, long process. Oil painting, it's very long. Sometimes it takes me 18 months, sometimes several years to achieve one painting, but I'm working on different painting at the same time. As I told you, the painting is already done in my head, in the little sketch I made in one second. And uh, just uh, the process is just a question of technical process. I'm not changing anything. I, I know what uh, I want to do. I know the size, I know the color. So after that, it's just a question of uh, process. It took, it took a long time. Uh, between two coats of uh, oil painting, you need some time to have 21 days for drying and to make things precise. You, you, can't, you can't paint, uh, you know, you can't paint this guy in, uh, in on the top of the background. It's the background is not dry because you are going to mix uh, the, the color. So it's not, uh, it's not a good way. Uh, I'm getting older, so I need uh, more than glasses, you know, I'm, uh, I'm using uh, some uh, magnifier now, which is not very easy to, to wear, especially here in Florida, where it's, uh, the weather is very hot. But when you need to make some detail, uh, you need to be very precise. It's one of my last one I did about a theory of the street. And um, I can give you also another video about um, uh, the skull I made with uh, lionfish. I love the lionfish, they are beautiful creatures, and uh, I think you have some uh, uh, in the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. But here in Florida, in the Caribbean, it's a nightmare, uh, it's a curse. So I made different paintings about it, and let me share this video with you.
That's a very beautiful creature. Um, I'm going to continue about uh, what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I had a very good friend who were painting, was painting underwater. But this technique is not exactly the, the one I'm using. So I'm not able first to dive, but also to paint on the water, you know, in uh, 20 minutes making paintings that my way. Uh, so uh, I am going to share you another video because my painting went down uh, on the water too. Uh, during several exhibitions I made mostly in, um, in Canada, in Montreal and uh, Quebec. And um, I also at that time a special painting to be uh, uh, place underwater permanently. Uh, I did it uh, with uh, acry acrylic painting, which is absolutely not my medium. But uh, for the event, I, uh, I did it. Uh, but it's not really uh, what I'm using when I'm doing uh, my main my main painting. So let me go with this uh, last uh, video. I hope you enjoy it.
No, I love this exhibition on the water. Uh, that was a great uh, opportunity to share the painting of my underwater scene on underwater with uh, divers looking at it. I think you had also in uh, Elat uh, some exhibition like this. That's very funny. Um, I do so also that uh, I redo this matador I, several times, maybe four or five times. Uh, I'm not used to make always the same picture indefinitely. You know, all of my paintings are very narrative, so once I get the idea, it's done. I need to, to make another painting. Uh, I remember when I uh, arrived in, uh, in the US uh, that uh, gallery asked me uh, to make a series of matador in different uh, positions. That was, yeah, okay, I could do it, but I had not the uh, feeling to do it. So I said, no, <clears throat> I made one matador. There is only one original painting sold in uh, 1993. And uh, the owner is very happy to have this uh, icon, of course. I like also to not only to, to, to tell a story in my painting, uh, in uh, just one image, and uh, to give the opportunity to the viewers to have their own interpretation and uh, their own um, feeling, and their own story. It's why I like to make exhibition with, uh, with many people coming to see me and saying, uh, oh, I like this one because that remind me uh, the scene I had some time. Or, uh, so I, I like this uh, interaction with, uh, with the public. Uh, what I like also to put in uh, my painting is some meanings. Uh, for example, I like to share um, the history of uh, art. And uh, how to do that, uh, to take uh, masterpieces of the past and to put them in my uh, universe under, under the sea. So you can see many, um, I will say maybe 50 or 60 of my paintings are pastiche or parodies, uh, like uh, the MC Escher here, or the uh, Night Talks by Eva Hooper. Not only um, I'm using uh, masterpieces from the past, but also icon from the pop culture, for example, or the advertising culture, like this one from an advertising for sunscreen, very well known uh, here in, uh, in the US. What I like to, to, to do also in my painting is not only uh, to make a picture, but uh, it's also to play uh, mostly with words. Uh, the titles are very important in my pictures. Uh, to play uh, to, to play on words also make uh, calambour in French puns and uh, also to make combination <clears throat> for example this uh, large painting was made uh, by the way technically uh, all of my paintings are um, based on a proportion we call the golden uh, ratio the golden ratio was used in every classical painting and classical building uh, because it's an harmonious uh, proportion. So I'm using them, uh, this uh, proportion uh, in all my painting. And uh, using it, uh, you can put uh, your um, canvas in different ways that would be always uh, nice for the viewer because it's a very natural, um, uh, it's something very natural for the human. Uh, to get uh, this uh, proportion, proportion, uh, for example, here yeah, it's a uh, uh, segment, um, and uh, if I cut here, that would be the golden ratio, not in the middle, not here, no, it's very special. And uh, so you see, I made uh, this great uh, panel, and uh, by the way, uh, the customer, our customer bought a few of them and disposed them here in uh, our, uh, uh, stairs. Uh, I knew I used also a few other panels uh, to make uh, this uh, diamond shape. So I like I like to play. Uh, I like to play with numbers also. For example, with this big painting of 25 canvases, I make a magic square, uh, putting a number on the on the tube here. Uh, those numbers are magical, so if you make the addition of the row or the columns or the diagonals, you will have always the same uh, sum. It's very intellectual, I know, but I like to play this kind of thing. And uh, doing this uh, huge uh, painting, 
you see the entire one here. You see with some numbers uh, and some um, uh, alchemical sign, uh, also about the, uh, the elements and uh, the planets. Uh, I was able to make different painting with one painting. I like to play like this. Uh, for example, uh, this one, if I take uh, uh, and for example, you can see if you put those nine pictures together, you can uh, figure the Megan David. Yeah. Okay, and on this one, you can make a star. Uh, this one was uh, all about Sephiroth, and uh, this one always from the same series of 25 pictures. You can uh, spell the name Miami because that was uh, for show. Uh, the Art Basel show in Miami in 2015, I think. So you see, I'm not only someone who's putting uh, an ID on, uh, on the picture. I like to play. Uh, so I'm mostly a conceptual artist. Uh, that could be very curious to say that, but uh, I'm, I can't categorize me in this kind of uh, paintings. Again, uh, some new uh, original painting I made recently. Uh, this one is also a pastiche of the, um, the Beatles cover. Uh, I'm very fond now with this kind of uh, uh, shape, a new shape for canvases. And it's good you know, when we are talking about uh, deep sea uh, to have this kind of uh, things like this one too. Maybe you notice that uh, I'm the pencil of blue, but to make the blue not monochrome or something very flat, I always added a red dot somewhere, like uh, the cape here on the, the matador or on different other uh, pictures like those. Now, there is uh, all the layers of meaning in what I'm trying to do. Because uh, painting is an art of communication. People are going to see them. You can tell them something. So I try to put some ideas in my uh, different paintings, like uh, to be very careful of your environment. And uh, making this is a good way to share uh, some awareness with, uh, with people. The best way, of course, is uh, to do it with kids. So uh, I made a lot of uh, interaction with uh, students, uh, helping them, mentoring them, uh, doing contests, uh, giving them some uh, uh, tools when I was able to do it. I have been uh, helping the scholarship of the underwater World Underwater Foundation Rolex since uh, 2003. Amazing foundation, giving the opportunity for free students to live uh, a full year uh, mostly underwater, trying to different things like uh, biology, uh, video making, and uh, going everywhere around the world. A very great uh, uh, foundation. Also, I like to play with kids because uh, kids will be uh, our future and uh, we need to prepare them to understand uh, where they are going to live, to be careful about it. And of course, uh, I'm talking about my main things, which is art. And those kids are always amazing because uh, they are new, they have uh, new ideas, they are really... Uh, uh, creative. I have very great time in um, uh, Malaysia, for example, with uh, kids uh, playing with colors uh, as we are not doing in, uh, in the US, for example. And that was uh, great to, to play with them because uh, that will be our um, uh, future 
and maybe my future customer too. Uh, so I will end this presentation and um, I'm so happy and um, thanks for all for, for Ilan to, and uh, Wild Dive to give me this uh, opportunity to share with you some of my work. I have more to, to show you if you want. I can, uh, I can uh, answer your question, of course. I hope you enjoy it. Go to my website here, uh, Painter Blue. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I have a Facebook page, and uh, every day, since for, for a few years now, every day I put a new picture every day. So you can uh, uh, go to Instagram and see uh, the different painting. You know, I, I did this for more than 43 years, I think. 45 years. So I have uh, many paintings, 1,000 oil paintings, um, 1,500 uh, work on paper. And uh, as I told you uh, a few minutes ago, I have 10,000 uh, ideas to do. So stay in touch and uh, I'm. Uh, with you, uh, Ilan, I give you back the floor. Thank you again. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you for this amazing uh, presentation. I enjoyed it a lot, and I'm sure everyone else as well. And I can tell you that finally, finally, I know how the blue spotted stingrays got the blue spots, which I never knew <laughs> that before. So, <laughs> Yes, you know, because, because with the painting, you can, you can teach all sorts of things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for that. We're going to go for the questions and answer. I want to tell everybody uh, that if you have any questions, please do not put that on the chat button, but uh, use the Q&A section so we can collect the questions from there. Uh, so, I'm going to go for the first uh, question. Um, okay, are all your paintings uh, are uh, using oil on canvas? Yes, uh, yeah, because it's uh, the way I started many years ago. Um, acrylic painting was not very uh, popular uh, when I started, and uh, by the way, when uh, I went to the school. Uh, after school, you know, the night school, I uh, just learned how to draw, taking uh, measure, proportion, drawing. And uh, by myself, I started to, to learn how to paint. You know, I was a huge fan of Salvador Dali, who had an amazing uh, technique. So I, I went uh, to different books and I tried many things, very bad. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this this uh, medium and the way I use it, like um, uh, the Vermeer or the Van Van Eyck uh, paintings, uh, is uh, really what fit to me. Uh, I'm not doing things quickly. I'm doing things very slowly, uh, methodically, progressively. And uh, that's that's my way to, my way to do it. Few times I use the acrylic painting, mostly on, on paper, by the way, but I prefer the watercolor. Acrylic is uh, faster to, to to dry, but the result for me, even if we have today many mediums and varnish, is not going to give you the depth of an oil painting. If you go to a museum and uh, go to see a Vermeer, for example. You see a, pi a picture done 600 years ago. So maybe I'm uh, too, uh, too big ego, but I'm thinking <laughs> that my painting will be seen, if the world still exists, uh, in 600 years. It's maybe not the case of acrylic painting because it's, uh, you know, it's not natural. Right? Uh, so it's not uh, my, my way to do. Recently, I started also to work on uh, the computer because I saw all those amazing guys uh, around uh, using it. Um, you know, you have this um, 
great uh, illustrator from your country, uh, Shlomo Cohen, who started as a classic illustrator, but he, he went very quickly to the computer things. I was not able to do that. I'm not very good with that, but uh, I tried to, to, to understand how it's working. Uh, of course, I was not born with a computer in a mouse in my hand, so it's not really uh, the way I like to, to do things. Um, and I'm stick with what I know the best. And uh, I, I, uh, of course, it's, it's a time consuming, it's time consuming, but it's my way. So I hope uh, to do uh, my best, as uh, Panek was saying when he finished his masterpiece in 1432. Uh, uh, the best I can do. Because it's, it's what I'm trying to do. Okay, we have a lot of questions uh, which are uh, actually uh, touching the same subject, uh, which is uh, regarding uh, how uh, people are able to buy uh, some of your work. So I suggest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present one of those questions, but I suggest if you are able, to put the slide which shows your website and uh, contact details while uh, you are answering, uh, so people can uh, copy that, exactly. So. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you can see it. You know, it's very simple. Uh, you go to uh, Painter of Blue, painterofblue.com, and uh, in painterofblue.com, you have uh, a store somewhere, and a few, uh, uh, prints and a few original are there. Mostly I'm showing uh, live in different shows where you can see the original painting. And it's always better to see the original uh, or the prints than uh, ordering online. If you have seen already my painting in shows, you know how it looks. So you can go on, you can go online. I have to say also that uh, maybe uh, there is some trouble with my shopping cart with the shipping fees. So the best, if you want to something, you email me and uh, I will do my best to, to give you the best quote I can find uh, directly from me uh, to you in, uh, in the country you're living. So that's the best way to do. And uh, don't uh, and feel free to contact me anytime if you have some trouble with uh, the choice or the availability of the painting. But mostly, I'm going to try to see if I can share the, the screen of my, um, uh, let me check just to share this one. And uh, I'm going to share uh, this one. So, see me right now, right? Yes. So Why am I trying to share it? I'm going to ask Renana's question. Okay. Uh, Renana is saying that on your website, many of the prints were sold out or not available. And she's asking, are they going to be available in the future or in the near future again? Uh, I think uh, most of the prints are available. Uh, I don't know which one. You know, here is a, is a shop. I don't know if you see it on the screen. Here is a shot and you see different ways. So you click on it and uh, they should be available. Uh, if they are not available, maybe there is trouble with my uh, shopping cart, I don't know. So email me, uh, you have a contact uh, form somewhere in this website. You contact me and I will be very happy to assist you and thank you uh, to, to look at it. And uh, I hope you will find uh, something to interesting for you. Mostly here uh, are prints and papers. They are rolled and shipped uh, worldwide, but some of them are on canvas too. Uh, I have also other products like uh, this, uh, this style. Oh, it's, uh, it's like you haven't seen this one, but uh, that's the dentist is a very popular one. It's a, it's a tile. It's a very nice product. Very well done. So I, I don't, uh, feel free to, to email me anytime for any help, okay? Uh, I'm very thankful if you are looking at uh, my work and uh, you want to, to get some uh, in your house. I'm very uh, happy with that. 
I'm not going to exhibit uh, yet in Israel, but anytime, you know, if I'm invited. Uh, but other, in the other places, um, mostly in Paris or in the US, uh, so of course, of, because of the virus, uh, the show in New York uh, in March had been uh, cancelled and delayed to the, to the month of October. Most of my uh, galleries are shut down right now. So I have only this uh, website to uh, make some uh, income with my art. Okay. Um, Ronnie is asking if it's possible to buy a poster of a pic. Big size. Or is it all uh, painting? I, I have some uh, art prints on this section, not too many. Some art prints here. But uh, you can go also on two other, I don't know if I can point it. Uh, let me check. Uh, where is the pointer? I can't, oh, no, there is no pointer, yeah. So there is two uh, society. One is um, Curious, and the other one is Society 6. They are um, uh, under license, and there are few of my uh, uh, best pictures there. So you can you can try you see uh, curious you can go to this uh, website and uh, click on it curious uh, maybe I can do that yeah yeah uh, this one it's mostly with uh, my uh, horses for example uh, and, uh, I lost uh, where I was uh, before and here the second one there is more uh, merchandising. Like uh, you see, uh, totes, uh, tote bags, uh, pillows, uh, uh, laptop sleeve, things like this. So all those things are uh, under the sense. Okay. Thanks for, for asking. I'm gonna go for the last question for uh, today. Uh, Andy, uh, who lives in the states. Uh, he saw your website, and he saw, he saw on your website that you got uh, your work in many galleries, and he, he's asking which gallery in Florida has the largest collection of your work. I have, I have uh, one display here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the name is um, North Beach Art Gallery. Uh, I have another display in a uh, motorcycle shop, which is it's very fun, funny. Uh, it's also, they are moving right now from uh, Fort Lauderdale to Pompano Beach. Uh, which was the places I, uh, I'm asking my wife. <laughs> Uh, not very good with uh, business, you know. Uh, so mostly you go to my website and you 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 see uh, where I'm exhibiting. I'm used to make the artwork also in uh, in Fort Lauderdale. I, uh, as I told you, I try to to reduce my uh, trips. I'm not going anymore to Las Vegas, uh, Chicago, Los Angeles. Um, it's too far from me now. I'm still going to uh, Malaysia, uh, Australia, you know, big trips like this. But I try to to stay home and uh, to put more time in my painting. You need to know that uh, running a business like this without any galleries, merchant doing this business, take takes uh, seventy percent of my time. So during that time, I'm not painting. Right now, I'm not painting. I'm just uh, promoting my uh, artwork. It's a very nice way to do it, of course. But uh, I'm not painting right now. Okay. Uh, so I want to thank you, Pascal, again for uh, this wonderful presentation. I enjoyed it a lot, I'm sure everyone did. And uh, I want to say that I really hope to see one of your exhibitions in Israel, the sooner the better. <laughs> it would be really nice if it uh, happened. 
And uh, I want to thank you once again for this uh, day and thank everybody for joining us. And uh, Pascal, I leave you uh, to say the last words of today and uh, thank you. Yes, thanks again for having me. Uh, I wish all uh, the best to all our uh, attendees tonight and uh, that uh, they can uh, stay safe and uh, be mindful because of the situation. Uh, so enjoy the blue. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you.